This body is the noblest and most eminent of all in this world. It should hold absolute control over this world. It once promised its people a dream. The never-changing eternity. Electro is the element of LARPers. Let me rephrase that. Electro is the element of those who go against the logic of the world. Be it intentional or accidental, they act in a manner that goes against norms and expectations. Their goals and methods alike are unorthodox, to say the least. Electro vision wielders stand in stark contrast with the environments and professions they find themselves in. They often stand out in their communities, well known for their eccentricities and oddities. A true conundrum given flesh. Where others blend into their environments, electro users are a brilliant light. The Crux fleet was engaged in intense battle at sea. Haishan, the leviathan who impressed warrior Adepti, was their target. The fight lasted four days before Haishan retreated into the night. When it re-emerged for a sneak attack, Captain Beto launched forward and beheaded the beast in a single strike. A certified genius, the Academia's greatest student in 200 years, Master of Lightning, capable of blackening the clouds over Mondstadt. Not the words you'd expect to describe the lazy librarian of the Knights of Avonius, yet each is accurate. Lisa thought to herself, I suppose I shall need a vision then. And the gods answered immediately. The Arataki Gang is more a group of misfit friends than an actual gang. Its members are barely functional on the best of days. That is, except for one, Kuki Shinobu, the hyper-confident second-in-command who escaped her life of maidenhood and expectations. Son of nameless adventurers, Lupacal to wolves, student of Varka and Andreas alike. Razor was content living with his canine family, but still he traveled into human society. He now is the bridge between both worlds, accepting himself as the anomaly he is. Kuching is a firm believer against the gods' right to rule, even contributing to the retirement of Rex Lapis. That said, she is also a massive fangirl of Rex Lapis. Amy never amounted to anything in her youth. Not a single achievement or friend to her name. So, she changed it. She is now the Princess de Vrotelung official, the lead character from her favorite book series and a very talented adventurer. Swift judgment comes to all who break the Academia's rules. The General Mahamantra, seemingly empowered by Hermanubis, is as straightforward and serious as they come. That is, until Sino opens his mouth and out pops corny puns in children's card games. Regal, respectful, and full of kindness. Those are the qualities one would expect from Inazuma's head shrine maiden, though the truth is far from expected. Yai Miko is a smug trickster and sly businesswoman, capable of manipulating many powerful parties. Across Sumeru, it is fairly common knowledge that Lord Sangama Bay is the only vendor who can procure anything you desire. Be it a complete trading card collection, a Sumter Beast theme park, or advanced inventions straight from Alice. It's all yours for the right price. According to the Jin inside her lamp, Dory is the true wish granter. Kujo Sara, Tengu General of the Tenryo Commission, holds her work and her honor to the highest standards. However, the moment her boss comes up in conversation, 
her persona turns on a dime into that of a hardcore Raiden Shogun otaku. A was a body double for her twin sister Makoto, the real Electro Archon. After she gave her life in the Archon Wars, she was given a manufactured body to hold her soul. Once she became the new Archon, she stuck her soul into an even more manufactured body, her sister Sorn. She placed that sword into another fake body, a robot body double of herself, and allowed that one to rule Inazuma in her stead. Makoto won the Archon Wars in Inazuma, a land engulfed in conflict, without fighting. During the Cataclysm, she finally met her end in a true battle, and left her sister a final gift utilizing the unorthodox time-traveling tree technique. This act changed the new Riding Shogun's perspective on eternity through transience. Kanakapatsir was a god who responded to worship with indignation. She could dispel the fog that plagued her island, but couldn't be bothered to. All was monotonous until she finally found a human she liked when he was killed by her self-declared followers. She became a god who slaughtered her subjects.